Our podcast is a part of the World Podcast Network, now with over a thousand podcasts. Visit the World Podcast Network at worldpodcast.network to listen to podcasts in over 12 genres. Come vote our podcast episodes up and help us rise on the leaderboard. If you have a podcast of your own, you can join for free. Welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Tanika, and today we are going to be talking about Milk Manor. I'm excited. I have, I've got, I'm, oh yeah, this is going to be a great season. But before we do and uh, head into Milf Mana, Let's do some hot goss. So I'm going to do four pieces this time just because one of them is going to be really short, but I think it's kind of hilarious. So we're going to just do do four pieces this time. But obviously this podcast does not talk about Ed and Liz, but obviously I watch it. So, you know, I know what's going on. And one of those things that we obviously does happen is the breakup over taco pasta. Now, as a black person, I feel like as even a normal person, I don't know what the fuck taco pasta is. I don't know if anyone out there knows what the fuck taco pasta is, but if you don't know what taco pasta is, well, guess what? They did post the recipe on TLC.com, and I'm going to post it to our socials so you can see it too if you want to make it, uh, if you're interested. Um, But here it is. It's called Breakup Taco Pasta. So, in a skillet, add and brown one and a half pounds of hamburger with taco seasoning, so ground beef, one onion, one bell pepper, color of choice, three Roma tomatoes, one clove of garlic, minced, salt and pepper, ranch seasoning, spicy. Once browned, add two cartons of beef broth, cheese, and pasta noodles. Let simmer until noodles are ready and enjoy. There you go. Where's the taco? But anyways, that is, that is brick of taco pasta. But that's about that. So next piece. Bachelor in Paradise star John Henry ha- is offering more details, even though I didn't know any details about the breakup between him and Kat. I didn't even know they were together, and they broke up a while ago, I think. Um, he revealed on, um, uh, I don't know, we'll figure out. Oh yeah, on the Almost Famous podcast, he revealed that he quote unquote spiraled leading up to the end of their engagement. So he said, "This is a long story." Um, and this was on the the podcast episode was on April twenty fourth. So the former BIP star explained that when he started his career as a commercial diver known for underwater welding, he promised to give at least ten years to the job before looking for love. You should never have to fucking do that in a, in in your what? But anyways, however, his engagement to Cat derailed his plans. He said, quote, I told her as of right now, my career is not relationship friendly. She knew that, but I was like, my plan is to get out of it anyways. Um, noting that he, quote unquote, bounced around a ton for the job. Initially, Kat, who is a travel nurse, moved to North Carolina so she could be closer to John Henry, even though her dream was to live in San Diego. Quote, Things were going well, really well. Now I have this job and then I get in this relationship. Then now it's like, okay, I have to start figuring out what I'm going to do. How am I going to make this transition to a career that is going to be a lot easier for me and her to work with? It just caught me by surprise. Now I'm starting to stress out about how I'm going to make this move. While John Henry was trying to figure out the next steps of life with Kat, um, 
So he said, I started to have my doubts. Then I started to see our differences a lot more. They were fucking there. You just spoke away, but anyways. So things just really got hard for me. It got to a point where it was just extremely hard for the both of us. Then basically I called it quits. I said, this doesn't feel right. I think this should be a lot easier than what it is. And it just, it wasn't the case. I just started thinking to myself, maybe this this just isn't for me. Once I got that in my head, it was just kind of spiraled from there. The former couple announced their breakup days after the VIP finale aired. I totally missed it. But they actually called off their engagement days before the show even, I guess, aired. So, okay. Kat apparently was shocked by the split. Um, This is what John Henry said, noting that his mental health struggles also added to his reasoning behind the breakup. Even though they've gone their separate ways, John Henry and Kat don't have any bad blood between them. So at least there's that. He said, quote, Kat is amazing. She really is something spe- special. She's not my longest relationship, but Kat's a, Kat's a catch. Jesus Christ. I'll tell you, she definitely did her part. Distance is hard for everybody. When she loves it, she gives it all, gives it her all, and she did everything that she needed to do, and then some in order to try to make our relationship work. So that's that. I wish them the best. Next, Alexandra Jarvis has closed the door on her time on the O Group. This is not surprising. Um, this obviously this news is ahead of the of selling the OC, so I guess we'll see the decline on that. But um, Jarvis uh, left her job at the Newport Beach, California location of the luxury brokerage around which Selling Sunset is focused. Her former boss, Oppenheim Group co-founder and Selling Sunset star Jason told people on Wednesday, quote, I don't want to speak for Jarvis, but she decided to do what's best for her and I have a lot of respect for that. We're still longer terms. Jarvis's photo has not been featured on the Oppenheim Group's website, which lists every member of the team at the Newport Beach office for several weeks. The Daily Mail was first to report on the departure. Jarvis is the third member of the cast to depart the O Group since October of 2023, when first Tyler confirmed that he had left to join his father's real estate group, um, which is the John Stanilin Group. Sean, if you remember Sean, who we barely saw in, in the last season, but was apparently close with Polly and then wasn't close with Polly anymore. He also confirmed his departure from the O group a month after Tyler in November 2023. I didn't know that. So, and then Jarvis Ad makes it three. He wrote, after much consideration, I've decided to part ways with the Oppenheim group. I am very excited about this new chapter in my career and eager to embark on a journey that closely aligns with my professional aspirations and personal growth. Damn. So there's that. But while we're on the trope of talking about the O group and the OC office, let's go to our last piece of hot goss. Austin, his family has a brand new addition. The Selling the OC star and his wife, Lisa, have welcomed their third baby, a son named Asen, A-E-S-O-N, uh, Quaid, like Dennis Quaid, on Thursday, April 25th at 8.32 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the couple confirmed to people. Um, so I think uh, Lisa posted, I, I don't know if she actually either said this or she posted on, on Instagram, but she said, I was 16 when I found my first dream boy, and now we have made our own. It's kind of cute. Um, Asen weighed seven pounds. She said, my heart is exploding and I'm so excited for our little Asen to complete her crew. Austin adds that it's been emotional leading up to the birth. He said, we are over the moon in love with our new baby boy. He's perfect. And daddy finally got a son. Okay. I do have pictures, obviously, and I will post those. Um, as we know, the couple already had their four-year-old twin daughters, Hazel and Leela. Um, so we know that. Um, yeah, so 
Austin and also said that he is incredibly proud of his wife. Um, she decided to go all natural, good for she, using no meds and giving birth the old fashioned way. It was intense and beautiful. All at the same time, I'm convinced women have superpowers. Say it again. Say I'm, I'm, I'm going to read it for him again. Just, okay. I'm convinced women have superpowers. Thank you, Austin. We do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we did. Did we do? Yeah, we did four pieces. So that's basically it for that. I'll have more for you in another episode, but let's start talking MILF Manor season two, episode one, MILF struck. So we are in Canada. We're on my neck of the woods. Why? <laughs> We're here. We got Jamie. She's our first person at the house. Her nickname is Sparkle for her sparkly personality. She has three kids. She was divorced twice. So that's her background. Next, we got Barbie. We're going to have a lot to say on Barbie. She's 45 years old. She'll, um, she'll date older men if they got money. I see you. <laughs> she wants to get the coochie tingles. I think all women should aspire to have the coochie tingles when it comes to their men. I'm that, you know what? That's coochie tingles. That's my new thing. Yeah. Um, Barbie does not see Jamie as competition when she meets her. She thinks that she's not competition at all. She does have a 26 year old son. She has not been in a relationship in 10 years. Next, we got Kelly Mack, 61 years old. She looks incredible. She tells us that she actually fled Vietnam. I, I don't know if I caught this right. Was it 1975 she said that they fled? Um, and she remembers all of it. Um, I believe she's been married twice. And she says that men her age are smelly. <laughs> Uh, I think we're going to, okay, we're not going to go ahead because the, the, re the, the, the reveal at the end is fucking gold. Okay. So there we go. Next, we got Crystal, 48 years old. She has three sons, four grandkids, damn. And she has been in five significant relationships in her life. She tells the women when she meets them, that she has her three sons, but that she actually lost one of her sons two years before. Um, he would have been 23 years old this year, she says. He was 20 years old when he was shot and killed during um, a robbery. I think it would have been an attempted robbery because I think she mentions they didn't actually get anything, but they were killed during this. And she also mentions that he was with a friend as well who was also shot and killed. This is horrible. It's horrible. Oh, man. 20 years old. A baby. Horrible. Um, so then we meet Christina, 46 years old. She was divorced a few years ago after 20 years of marriage. She says younger men kind of just, you know do it for her but more right and she says listen if men can date younger women then why can't we date younger men okay if you're looking to have something insignificant at our age as you know at a older age as women um that isn't necessarily going to last a lifetime or whatever you're just kind of looking to have some young dick then by all means go for it who cares but the difference with an older man versus being with a younger woman who potentially may still want to have kids they can that's my biggest thing if you want to have kids then at least with a older man versus a younger woman you can technically do it then i'm going to have something else to say in a minute but if you're with a, a younger man who does want to have kids, and it's not the ones that don't want to have kids, but wants to have kids, 
he's not going to be able to necessarily do that with you. And sure, there's the adoption route, which is always an option. But what if you don't want to have to raise more kids? So there's just all of these different things. But with that said, I don't think older men should be cradle robbing with younger women any more than I think that women should be doing it with men. I think it's gross on both sides, but I'm still here to watch it. So we find out that Barbie was a stripper. Next, on our last person that we got to meet is Lynette. She is 50 years old. She has a 26-year-old son and a 17-year-old daughter. She was divorced eight years ago. And after her divorce, she said, you know what? I never really got to have my whole phase in college because I, you know, got pregnant or I got married. I had my whole phase after I got divorced. You go, girl. You go, girl. Go have your whole phase. Everyone deserves to have their whole phase. Anyway. Um, so what I also noticed is the focus on let's talk about the fact that these these women have sons. And I think that was all on purpose because you're like, we know you think the sons are coming this year, but you wait, you wait and see what's going to happen. So, um, so we got everyone and then everyone gets the text of, um, you know, welcome to Milf Manor, you know, where, you know, there's going to be some twisties and some turns this season throughout the season. Then we get another text. Here comes the men. So we got Chris. He's 27 years old. He's an MMA fighter and a model. And he says he loves all kinds of women. He doesn't care. But I also wrote, my God, his teeth are sharp. Anyway, we have Joey. 21. He's an event promoter, aka F boy. He wants to get um manhandled, I think is what I wrote. And I wrote, he looks like a fucking baby. Let's move on to the next person. We have Jacob, who's 23. He's a Brit. We have Sam, 24. He works in sales. And our last guy is Miles, 24 years old. He is a chef, a vegan chef, and he is a personal trainer. He's like, listen, I'm hot. I got nice eyes. I And he's like, I'm easy on the eyes. And not only that, I'm humble. No, you're fucking not. <laughs> but anyways, everybody's here. And the women do realize, okay, there are six of us and there's five of them. You just wait. But I did think in this moment, like, there's only six women. I swear we had more last season. And there's only five men. We definitely had more last season. You hold on to that. We're not done yet. Anyway. Joey. I wrote here again, is the biggest fuckboy of all. Of course, he's 20 fucking one. Then all of a sudden, Barbie comes and sits on Joey's lap while he was talking to Christina. Okay, that's just one instance of we're finding out who Barbie is as a person. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, so there is a sign on the wall in the house, because now they're going through the house, um, that says R-I-L-F-I. And they did determine that this stands for room I'd like to fuck in, I think is basically what it is. And I'm like, okay, we got another text. It's time for the first challenge. And with this challenge, we don't know exactly what it's going to be, but what's going to happen is that one woman is going to be the quote unquote host while the others get to pick men. And they'll, this is being determined by them picking paper out of a like glass jar. So Kelly is, Mac is first and she picks Miles. Christina picks Jacob. Um, Jamie picks Joey. Lynette picks Sam. And that means Barbie picks the host card. She must have been like, what the fuck? I know she was the entire fucking time, but let's, let's go through it. Um, 
the they get another text that says men will be in a special speedo while the women will be wearing bathing suits and we'll find out what that special um that's why I said I say speedo. I think I just gave it away. It's, it's not going to be wearing a special outfit, but it's going to be speedos and we'll, we'll say what that is in a minute. So, or I'll just say now. The speedos have uh, my Canadian uh, flag on it. And I uh, just, I just wrote, why did you have to defile my flag like this? What did we ever do to you? Anyways. So what they're going to be doing Barbie mentions Canada is famous for maple syrup because that's all we can be fucking known for, apparently. So with that in mind, what is going to happen with this challenge, which it feels so stupid, is that the women and the men are going to be pouring maple fucking syrup all over each other, and then they have to squeeze said maple syrup off of their fucking bodies into this container. And whoever gets the most wins the date. What the fuck am I watching? Why do I do this to myself? Because I'm trash. And you're trash if listening. And if you watch the show, we love trash. And here we go. Anyway, the MILF matter is the biggest, biggest trash. Um, so yeah, the challenge is going on, whatever. And, um, when they say exactly what the challenge is going to be, I believe it was Jamie says, my son's in the fraternity. He's going to kill me. <laughs> um. Also, while they were doing the challenge, doesn't freaking um, a Barbie kind of like go up to some of the men? She's like tasting the maple syrup off of them, like licking them. Ugh. She's saying, I'm getting turned on watching you guys get all sticky and shit. And I'm like, you're not okay, ma'am. You're not okay, but okay. Um, Kelly Mack is not even fucking trying to do this. She's just massaging this maple syrup in them like they're at a fucking massage parlor or something. And she's just like rubbing it into him. And I'm just like, honey, you're trying to win anyways. Jacob, while being caressed by whoever the fucking woman he was with, I think it was um um Christina, while she's rubbing it into him, he's growing, y'all. His flake is getting a little uh bigger. If you get my drift, and um, Christina's like he has the whole package, and I said, oh. I mean, I mean, if you unleash that shit, am I, yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, the winners of this challenge is Crystal and Chris. But guess what, y'all? Because Barbie did such a great job hosting, she too gets a date. She didn't have to do anything. And that's what Jamie says. She's like, she didn't have to do fucking shit. And she gets a date. I feel like runner up should have gone on a date. But anyways, she decides to pick Jacob because I guess she says that he tasted the best, but I think it's more because his dick is huge and that's been confirmed. So the women, I guess that are not happy that she got the date, but you know, what are you going to do? So then we are on the date and J Jacob asks right off the bat to the women, who were you feeling when we got there? Barbie's like, well, Chris. I was feeling Chris. Don't forget Chris is currently on a date with Crystal. And Crystal's like, what the fuck? Then the women ask the men, what about you? Who are you feeling right off the bat? And Jacob's like, well, thousand percent you, Barbie. And Chris is like, well, to be honest, Barbie. It's at this particular point in time that I've been like deuces and I would have left. I would have left. Ugh, anyway. Meanwhile, back at the house, Christina walks in with a swimsuit and she's going to be um, going to ask Joey to go into the hot tub with her. 
he says, um, and is in the moment that he's good dating anyone from the age of the 23 to 65. Then he asked Christina, are you dominant in bed? That's the first question he asked her <laughs> is whether or not she's dominant in bed. And she's like, I like to be sometimes. And she asks, do you like BDSM? And he says, yeah, she's down for some BDSM. She likes BDSM. Um, Joey asks, have you ever been, uh, had your butt bitten? I'm sorry, what? And he's like, it's my love language. That's her fucking love language? I mean, gone are the days of acts of service and, um, what the other ones? <laughs> acts of service, um, words of affirmation. Gone are those days. No, 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 no. You now can add bite, butt biting to your love languages, everybody. Who knew? Anyway, since this is love language, he said he's been doing it to women since he was 18 years old. So she's kind of like, all right, she gets up and I'm thinking, what the fuck you doing? My girl stands up and then he bites her ass. Y'all don't even know each other from Adam and y'all just biting each other's fucking asses? Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, And she's completely into it. I mean, not to you know, yuck her yum or whatever the fucking term is, but I mean, <sighs> so back to this date, they're separated now and the oldest woman that Jacob has been with is 35 years old. Now I know he's 23, but that's the fucking oldest, 30 fucking five year old. Fuck me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> No. She says, my son, this is Barbie. We don't know remember. She says that she, her son isn't really about her dating younger men. Um, I think that's understandable. Then Barbie asks, do you have a boner? Who, who asks these kinds of fucking questions on a date for of someone you just met? Maybe you might ask that if you are like in a full blown relationship or whatever, or semi in a relationship or something. Right off the bat, this is how I know Barbie is only on this date with Jacob because he has a big dick and it's been confirmed. And again, not king shaming the dick pigginess of this girl, of this woman, not shaming it. Whatever. We all like what we like. <laughs> but you're supposed to be on the show to find quote-unquote love for the rest of your life yeah right but it's just maybe maybe barbie has the memo and she's like i'm not gonna try and find quote-unquote real love here in milf manner oh anyway um so with crystal and chris she asks when were you last in love and he's like well i love my fighting and she's like that's not what i meant I want to know when you're in love with a human woman, not you're not fighting. And he's like, listen, I have broken up with women that I was in love with for my fighting. Okay. Um, there seems to be a little bit of <laughs> wires crossing here because I feel like if you love somebody, you can make the fighting and the woman work at the same time. I'm confused, but anyway. Crystal lays it out there and says, I think you're in love with the idea of being in love. Like, I don't think you're actually in love. He just basically wants to find someone that means as much to him as his fighting does. I don't know, man. I don't know if I can compete with your freaking fighting. But anyways. The, so the, uh, I guess we're back at the house now. It's the next day. And the men seem to be really loving Barbie. So while everyone is sitting together talking outside, here's when the twist comes. We see two cars pulling up. And you just can clearly see they're men. And you're like, okay, who are these men? 
right? I'm thinking it could be men from last season. I'm thinking all kinds of things. Not not this, though. This was, this was we're going to get to it. And again, for those who didn't watch the episode. And then like you see, I clocked one of the men had gray hair. And I'm like, that guy has gray hair. So it can't be younger men. And it was before Joey's reaction to seeing this person. I thought, it's their fathers. And then lo and behold, Joey's like, guys, 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 that's my dad. And then you see Jacob's like, that's my dad. Y'all, the twist is the fathers of these boys are fighting for the affection of the woman. They're fighting against their sons. This is fucking great. <laughs> this is like... Oh, DLC, Matt Sharp, thank you so much for this. This was so, oh, so good. So good. And I'm thinking, hi, Daddy. These men are hot in comparison to these men. Like, I thought the hottest guy there was Miles-ish. Hate to give him that, but I think he's, like, the hottest guy there of the younger men. But when, but when the fathers rolled up, I'm like, hello. Hello, hello, because they're hot. And then you just see the women being like, oh my God, their dads are hot. Ooh, this is a great twist. This is an amazing twist. I loved this. This is so good. And I'm in. This is going to be better than last season. Um, so that's basically it for this episode. The only, because they didn't do next time on, on Discovery Plus for some reason, I wasn't going to clock everything anyways because I didn't care, but there does look like another twist is going to be happening at some point, and it's women. Now, my theory is that the women are these, these guys, their mothers. I think it's their mothers. So I think we're going to have the mothers the sons, the fathers, and their mothers competing <laughs> with this. Or, that's my theory. I think that'd be fucking great. Or, we might be having some of the women from last season on this. That's another option. What I'm going to do, because I don't think we're going to get that that plot twist yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post... um. Uh, a poll. I'm curious to know what you all think. Do you think it could be our mothers coming on? Do you think it could be last season's women coming on? I think either way, I think personally, juicier would be their mothers. Because that there's there'd be it would create this weird kind of tension between the the fathers and the women. And it could just be hella awkward for the sons. Um, but I, I think like this could be, this could be great. And I feel like I know a lot of people were saying Dilf Manor, Dilf Manor. This is a great stepping stone into Dilf Manor by what they're doing with this, with this season. Just fucking golden, golden. This is, yeah. Anyway, that is it for Milf Manor for this week. So if you like what you heard, please rate, review the podcast on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also, don't forget that uh, you can also share us with everyone in your life if you really love this. And I do want to read those reviews. I'm definitely getting five-star ratings, but I want to read those reviews. So send me those reviews and I will read those four and five star reviews on the podcast. Also, we're on every one of your favorite podcast apps, every one of them, including you can find us on YouTube at Reality Tea Times 2. If you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to either Facebook or Instagram at Reality Tea Times 2. You can also find us on Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, and Reality T Times Two Pod. We also have our email, which is at reality times two at hotmail.com. Definitely want to hear from you guys. 
And we also have our new website where you can listen to all of these episodes. You can review the podcasts on there as well. You can connect with me in any way, all the stuff. It's all there. And you can find me there at www.realityt times two, all spelled out, um, dot podpage dot io. It's there. And don't forget, I also have my other podcast with my friend Mikkel, Next Week Podcast, where we talk about all kinds of different topics. Um, but you can find us on any of your favorite podcast apps over there as well. Or you can also go to YouTube um, and you can go to Next Take Podcast, as well as our website, which is solo.to forward slash Next Take Podcast. Um, so yeah, there's with that. And that's basically that. And again, don't forget, if all of this information is overwhelming, we do have all of the links, everything in our show notes. But that is it for now, guys. Thanks. Bye.